If we look into the scores, we have the main melody, which is always played by the fifth finger and always like the first note of the figure. After it, there are a lot of small notes, which are creating this Aeolian harp feeling. Basically, if we only take a look at the right hand here, we have two different levels. We have the main melody level and we have the Aeolian harp harmony level, let's say. And these two parameters are playing on different dynamical levels. So we have the main melody, which is on a higher dynamical level, so it is, it should be a little bit louder or, you know, with more weight, basically, compared to the Aeolian harp. And everything still is playing on a piano, pianissimo level. Then we have the same thing going on in our left hand. We have a lot of small notes, together with the right hand, which are creating this Aeolian harp thing. And then we have sometimes some bass notes, which are like supporting the harmony. And these special bass notes, they are also on another dynamical level, a little bit louder than all these small notes in the middle, but not as loud as the main melody. So in total, I would say we have like three different dynamical levels that are going on in a general piano level. As I want to have more dynamics on the main note, this means I have to play with more weight in this specific note. And afterwards, I want to have much less weight to make big contrast between these two levels. The bigger the contrast between these levels, the easier for the audience to hear that there is like one voice that is going through this whole Aeolian harp thing. So basically I'm starting with a deep wrist and then immediately I'm coming up, playing all of these small notes, and then I'm coming back and then ending at the same point again. So basically I'm like creating one big circle with my arm and I'm playing like this all the time. So let's repeat it again. We are starting with a low wrist, which means we are having much more weight in our fingers. Then we can come up. In these notes we have much less weight. And then we come back down. And by coming down, it means we are also doing a little crescendo because we are adding some weight in, in our playing. So again, we are starting low, come up, and this will create like this circular movement in our wrist and also in our elbow. tell you about the biggest problem I see with students um, like I was showing you a second ago what they do is they kind of have this epiphany when they <laughs> when they start this piece and they say oh my gosh I can use circles uh, when I play and watch Josh I can do it now they go because that is a good technique the circles are a good technique because it keeps your hand loose but it's really bad if your hand and your wrist is getting ahead of the finger movement. Um, so in any type of quick piece, whether it's this etude, we did this a few weeks ago, or whether it's just a basic trill, there should always be some element of wrist or hand movement to alleviate tension. There should also be finger motion that keeps things crisp and very clear and um, aligned between the hands. What I'm saying about getting ahead of <clears throat> the, the fingers is if you're doing this wrist motion and the fingers are lagging behind the hands, you're gonna get that blurry, sloppy sound. Similarly, if you just have finger motion, which I never really encounter with students, but this can cause a lot of tension. I encounter it all the time in other pieces. This piece, usually the students naturally watch somebody play it and then they start imitating it. So I would do all sorts of sets of rhythms as well. I would particularly do, particularly do two, three, and six rhythms since that coordinates a lot with the piece. So and then 
Make sure to watch my other videos about rhythms um, that explain how to do those from the first, second, third, and fourth, however many notes. Basically, what I'm saying is a three rhythm has three variations. You can start from the first note, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can start from the second note. You can start from the third note. And then, uh, and then you're done, because if you start from the fourth note, you're just repeating the first segment. With six rhythms, you have six different starting notes. It's critical that you do each of those so that your hands don't get to used to um, one of these. Because if you just do this, which is probably the most practical one to do because it's always working towards that melody note, uh, you still might develop bad habits there. But if you start from here, and so forth, uh, that will really help. Thank you. 